What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, all that information is in the description box below. Also, go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speaks TV. Make sure you subscribe over there and hit that little bell so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now, let's get into this topic. Now, this video is for educational purposes, so as I approach this topic with respect, I need you all to please, please, please be respectful in my comment section. Thanks. All right, Pastor Keon Henderson and Shawnee, rumors and romance. Now, Pastor Keon Henderson is the pastor of Lighthouse Church in Houston, Texas, and he married Shawnee O'Neill, who is the creator of VH1 hit show, Basketball Wives. Yes, Shawnee is a first lady. <laughs> <laughs> now, many people online were not happy that Shawnee was marrying Keon, which is no surprise to me because there are a lot of people online who are just not happy with themselves. Nevertheless, as a matter of fact, a lot of women and men took to social media to talk about rumors surrounding Pastor Keon Henderson's sexuality. Now, if you look on YouTube or if you Google uh, Pastor Keon Henderson scandal sexuality, you'll find what people online have said. Now, before I get started, I want to congratulate Pastor Keon Henderson and First Lady Shawnee Henderson. They had a nice wedding out there on one of the islands. As a matter of fact, the wedding had a little mini series on VH1. No surprise there. The honorable world-renowned Bishop T.D. Jakes officiated their wedding as he is also a mentor to Pastor Keon Henderson and has counseled and supported the couple through their partnership. Now, the celebration marked a new chapter for the couple as they were in previous marriages before they met and became engaged in November 11th, 2021. Now, they have embarked on a new journey together as husband and wife, and now here comes the people on the internet with the rumors. Man, you can't win for losing. Look here. Now, I remember years ago when those rumors started, years ago, and there was a particular vlogger slash blogger who talked about it on, you know, their platform about Pastor Keon Henderson and gospel recording artist Ernest Pugh having some sort of entanglement and also a rumor about a sex tape, allegedly. Now, those rumors have been out there for years, and no one really talked about that story, you know, except for that blogger slash vlogger who's still around. No one really said anything about Pastor Keon and Ernest Pugh until Pastor Keon and Shawnee decided they wanted to get married, and then they got married, and then they had a little miniseries on VH1, and now here comes the people on the internet with the rumors. This is for my subscribers, the people who... <laughs> Who are over here on my show especially the ones who sent me videos and wanted me to address this and kept telling me dawson talk about it talk about it i'm doing this for y'all okay i'm doing this for y'all i was on a sabbatical but now i'm back so let's get into it let me just say this these are rumors they're just rumors i don't know if they're true or not frankly i don't believe it but this is a youtube show this is not the tbn network or 700 club or the word network we talk about things you all sent it in, and that's what we do over here, so we're going to talk about it. Let me say this. I want to say this, especially to people who think they cracked the case or they discovered something on Keon Henderson, and they were saying, girl, Shawnee, didn't you know? Didn't you hear? Oh, Shawnee, you need to be careful. You know, a couple men and women said that. Let me say this to you all. Shawnee has young adult kids, and she also has uh, teenage kids. And those, her kids are, you know, internet savvy, they're on social media, and don't you think, just think y'all, don't you think if there were rumors out there about a man who's about to marry their mama, and they, I'm sure they heard all of this, don't you think those kids would say, mom, look what's out here about this dude, man, what's going on with you, you trying to marry my mom, answer this, don't you think that those grown kids that she has would say that, not to mention that Sh Shawnee is with the basketball wife. She's out there with Evelyn and Jackie. They, all them women do is gossip. Don't you think if it was something they had heard? Come on, y'all. That they would say, Shawnee, did you hear this about Keon? This is I Come on, y'all. Think, man. Think. And also give Shawnee some credit. Don't you think she's smart enough to do a background check on a man before she marries him? The only man she, this is her second marriage from what I know. Her and Shaq had been divorced for years. And when she finally found love with Keon, you remember Shaq came out in an interview and he said, Shawnee didn't do anything wrong in our marriage. I messed it up. 
And for years, we thought that Shawnee was sleeping around with who? The, it was the, the trainer or the chef or whoever it was. That was out there for years. Now, Shaq, I just believe you should have came out a little earlier and said that because for years, people raked Shawnee over the coals thinking she broke up the marriage and she cheated on you. I am sure that Shawnee and her kids had a conversation with Keon about a lot of things, even these rumors that are out here. I'm sure Shawnee talked to him about that, all right? Now, let me say this to the church people. Y'all know I can't leave without addressing y'all. Let me say this. Because this subject is bigger than the rumors about Pastor Keon Henderson. It is. Let's just say in general. The church, you all push the whole deliverance for people who are same gender loving so they can become ex-gay. That comes from the church. Now, if you all believe that and you push that, and when people come to your church and they say they're struggling, they want to be delivered, and they go through the deliverance process, they go through the reparative therapy, the conversion therapy, and now they're ex-gay, kind of like Andrew Codwell. <laughs> they go through all your programs and deliverance services, and they decide because they are still able-bodied men and women that they want to have sexual relationships and in the confines of the church you're supposed to be married, so they're going to marry someone of the opposite sex. If they do that, why is there an outcry? Because many of the people, the women who sent me this story, you all are Christian. And some of the videos I saw and the people who talked about it, they're confessing to be Christians too. This is what you believe. Deliverance from same-sex attraction. So if you believe that, and these people come to your church and they go through that process and they decide they meet somebody in the church and they want to get married. Why is there an outcry? Or could it be, church, that deep down inside you don't believe that they're delivered either or they're ex-gay? That a woman who for 10, 20, 30 years used to eat Hot Pockets all her lives, Hot Pockets, that finally she, <laughs> she done found her a man and she don't want no more Hot Pockets. Or that a man who was out there with other men giving it his best. He was the president of the Sausage Fest. That, that he, that he, finna marry Sister Lulu in the church. Sister Brenda. Come on, Sister Brenda, you don't know what that nigga used to do. Yo, yo, yo. Let Pastor Keon Henderson and his wife, Shawnee Henderson, first lady, let them people live. Let them rich people. <laughs> let them live their life. Let them live their lives and serve the Lord. All right? Because this is what the church wants. Whether the rumors are true or not, let them people live. They all right. And you're going to be all right too. Now, to the people who sent me this story, especially the women, I know why you all are concerned about this because many of you who reach out to me, a lot of you all have been married to men and um, some of you all have incurable uh, sexually transmitted diseases as you all have shared with me. And I, I understand the church is not going to talk about this. And I'm a vlogger. I'm not, you know, I'm going to talk about it. I don't care what they say about me. They ain't going to stop this. So I, I, pre <laughs> I appreciate y'all for sending the stories to me. But I, I want to, you know, read you all something that I got like last week. And this comes from a subscriber named Be Special. And Be Special wrote, in the church, and I have to paraphrase here because of YouTube, y'all. She writes, in the church, I was r word by a minister of music at a young age. Then I got engaged. Later on, I got engaged to another music person, and he gave me HIV. <sighs> she goes on to say, I had one daughter who is now dead. She died of complications related to HIV. 44 years later, I am here, and she puts note, I knew zero about the community of black men in the church who were closeted. Thank you for your letter B special. You know I appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing. Take your medication. Listen to your doctors. You're going to be okay. All right? You're going to be all right. Let me address what B special said. B special, one of the reasons, and I'm addressing you, and there are many other women who feel the same way you do. Why is there a community of uh, down low people in the church? One of the reasons is for what I stated in this video. The ex-gay movement, the conversion therapy, the reparative therapy. A lot of that is the reason why. Because some people that don't go to church, and even some that attend, who are critical thinkers, we don't believe that a person who was out there for 20, 30 years having sex with women or having sex with men, I don't think you didn't know what you were doing. I don't believe that you can just turn your sexual desires or attractions on and off. I just, I, I, you can't make me believe that. 
Now, anyone can abstain from sex. Anyone can practice abstinence. You can. But to say that your sexual desires or your sexual attractions have totally changed, I don't believe that. And for you people who push that for these individuals, can you change your sexual attractions or desires? Answer that question. Now, I know there are people who come over here and they say, oh, Dawson, well, God can change people. God can do anything. Don't you limit God. I'm not limiting God. I believe that God will do what God wants to do. But I also believe this, that God, if he wanted to, God could go to every cancer ward throughout the United States and the world and heal these people of cancer. I believe that God can go over to St. Jude's Hospital and heal those children who are there. They didn't do anything to nobody. Why wouldn't God go over there and heal them? God does what God wants to do. And one thing I won't be doing on this show is telling people who are struggling with their sexuality that after, you know, conversion therapy, reparative therapy, all these programs, the deliverance services, after all of this, that if you go marry a person of the opposite sex, everything is just going to be okay and all of your desires and attractions are going to change. I can't support you on that movement. Nope, can't do it. Because I've seen men and women get hurt by that mess. I have. I get tons of letters, especially by first ladies, who tell me, uh, Dawson, you're telling the truth. Don't let these people in the comments stop you. I'm a first lady, and I'm living with HIV. I'm a first lady. I have herpes. This is what, these are the letters I get. Men who say, Dawson, I thought she was out of that lifestyle. She went back to women. This is what I get. The church doesn't want to talk about this. So that's why we have YouTube. That's why we have vloggers. I'm going to talk about it. I take all the hits. I don't care. You ain't going to stop me. <laughs> Y'all done said and tried to do everything you wanted to do, and I'm still going because it's the truth. You know it's the truth, and some of you are taking medication for the incurable sexually transmitted diseases that you got, and you hate because I'm telling the truth, and it's triggering you because the people in the church would not tell you the truth, and you mad at me because they wouldn't tell you the truth, and I'm saying it. That's why people say, Dawson, I wish I knew you 10 years ago. I wish I knew you 20 years ago. I wouldn't have made these mistakes. I wouldn't have let the people in the church, the pastor, the first lady, the elders, the prophets, the prophetess, I wouldn't have let none of them push me to marry that man or marry that woman. Because many of those people in the church, they wanted your money. They weren't concerned about your life or your well-being. In some of these churches, it was always give to the pastor, give to the first lady, give to the first family. And the next time God comes around, he'll bless us. Oh, I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. Some of you will tell people, and you get so happy about it. Oh, my pastor live in a mansion. My pastor live in a high-rise on the Upper East Side in New York. My pastor live here in Buckhead. They live in Beverly Hills. My pastor drive a Rolls Royce. He drives a Bentley. What do you drive? Where do you live? Oh, I'm digging deep today. Let me mess with it for a minute. Y'all ain't ready for this. This is a YouTube show for thinkers. I'm over here to provoke you to think. Oh, Dawson, well, you know, our pastor going to Dubai. We raised money. The pastor going to Africa. We sent our pastor to London. He going to Singapore, him and the first lady. Our pastor going to Hawaii. Okay, wonderful. But question, where are you going? Where have you been? Oh, Dawson, well, you know, every now and then I drive up to Augusta to the Soul Food Restaurant and I get an oxtail dinner, a hog mog and cheese sandwich and a side of fat back. Take a breath. So you believe that God is tantalizing you and that the only ones who can live a good life, an abundant life, a prosperous life are the ones in leadership positions in the church, the pastor, the bishop, the first lady, the prophet, the prophetess, the elders. And the only thing you can do is drive to Augusta to a soul food restaurant and get an oxtail dinner, a hog mog and cheese sandwich and a side of fat back. You out your cotton picking mind. You better tell the devil to get back, to get back out of your limiting thoughts that got you thinking that the pastor and the first lady and the prophetess and the bishops and the elders are the only one that are supposed to live a good life here on earth. Let me say this. There are a lot of you who have been hurt by people in religious institutions. Some of them have been leaders. And I'm going to tell you now, you think that they took away your power and you're going to live a cursed life and all this. Let me tell you, take up your bed and walk. You don't need those people's permission to live an abundant life, which is what God wanted for you before the foundation of the earth. You don't need their permission. Now, let me calm down, y'all. I feel it on me. You know how I get on the YouTube show I created and cultivate it. Now, look, <laughs> boy, I don't even know what be taking over on me, man. I mean, ah. 
Ah, trying to shake y'all. Wake up. Look here. I want my audience. I want you all to tell me, women and men, do you believe in the X gay movement? That's the first question. Second question. Would you marry a man or a woman who was ex-gay and now they're in the church? That's the second question. Number three, if you had a friend who was marrying a man or a woman who was ex-gay, would you support their decision or would you tell them? Kind of like I would. I don't believe they change. <laughs> Answer those questions for me, y'all. Now I'm off of this. Go off in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this video. Until next time, it's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself and each other. Peace.